Welcome to my spooky Halloween special. Today, we are looking at the rat, an infamous guitar pedal known for being dark because it comes in a black box. to admit to you that I don't have a rat. I don't own one, and I'm not sure if I've ever played one. But I have today four different plugins, three of them are free, uh, of the rat. And we're going to see how it sounds. We're going to see if we like it. It's a very popular pedal, you know. And uh, I, you know, I've never, I'm not an expert on it. Just putting that out there. Definitely not. However, someone who is an expert on it, uh, Mr. Josh Scott, over at JHS, has just released an episode, which I did watch, and, uh, you know, I, I assume that if you're watching my videos, you've probably heard of the JHS show, you should watch it, it's a great show, uh, but he's just did a whole big episode on the Rat, because he's releasing his new Rat uh, Super Pedal collection. The abridged version is that the Rat was a distortion pedal made by Proco, they originally made it custom in 1978 and then started mass production in 1979. So quite an old distortion, and it's one of those sort of pedal archetypes where there's a lot of clones and a lot of other rat-based pedals that are similar. The rat has a rather unique filter tone knob, which works sort of opposite the way most pedals do. Rather than getting brighter when you turn it clockwise, it actually rolls off the top end. So it is an adjustable low pass filter. That filter is targeting 1K and above as you roll it off. And it is also somewhat gain dependent. So the higher you run your gain, the more dramatic the top end roll off will be with the filter knob. The RAT is a non-inverting op amp distortion with hard clipping silicon diodes. Later on, a Proco employee made the Turbo RAT, which is the same pedal with LEDs instead of silicon diodes for the clipping. LEDs have a higher clean headroom, so they don't break up as quickly, giving it a little different character and more clean headroom. I've got here a collection of rat style plugins. We have the Black from Nembrini Audio, which is free, the Rodent V2, which is a little lesser known um, but has some cool mods, that is also free, the TSE R47, which is also free. And for fun, I threw in the Dirt Pedal from Archetype Gojira, which is not officially a rat clone, but you can tell by the filter knob that 
well, I think it is. So we're going to see if it's uh, how close it is to these, how close these are to each other. And unfortunately, I don't have a rat pedal to compare it to, nor the expertise to tell you how close these are. But the question is, do we like them? Uh, they're free, so we can check them out. And maybe which one is the best? if such a thing could be ascertained. For my amp today, I'm using the Black Sun from Audio Assault, which is also free until December 1st, 2021. So grab that now if you haven't already. It's a cool amp. I'm just using it sort of as a clean platform for these. There's very little gain. And I suppose um, I will play you my clean tone first, just because, you know, I will. <laughs> And I have a little bit of reverb on there um, from, I'm gonna turn that down a little bit. It's got a tiny bit of dirt on it. This amp doesn't really easily clean up completely, but uh, I think that's fine. I was looking up what kind of amp people use for these and some people prefer clean amps and some people prefer overdriven or dirty amps. So who knows? Um, we can always try it with more gain on the amp too, but this is not the kind of pedal that most people are using like a tube screamer without any gain. It's typically used for distortion. Got my handy MIDI crab hooked up as my foot switch controller so I can switch between these with my feet. If you haven't seen the video on that, well, you should. You can go check it out here. So I've just loaded these up with everything at noon. Uh, I've tried to match the volume between the channels and we're gonna see what that sounds like. So. Let's give it a go. Just looking at the interface first, um, I want to point out that the black from Nimbridi Audio does have a resizable GUI, which is a really nice touch. Now it is the newest of these plugins. Uh, the others do not have resizable GUIs, and um, the Neural DSP does, though it's fixed settings. Not a big deal, but just wanted to point that out. I would say the Nimbridi to me wins uh, for looks alone right away. So all these have their drive at noon, but we can see right off the bat that there is a pretty big difference in what that actually means. Uh, the rodent is the lowest gain of them, though it has some mods <clears throat> that make it quite high gain if you want. So, so I've got the R47 and the black dialed in with each other and they actually sound almost identical when uh, when I have them set up like this. But again, I'm leaving the black at noon and I've got the R47, you see, all uh, whacked out. <laughs> I've had to max out the gain and roll off some of the filter. But I'm gonna switch back and forth between them and we'll see if I can figure out in post <laughs> where they are. <laughs> Well, I can hear a little bit of difference there, and the R47 has a little bit lower gain still, and it's got a more flabby low end to it. The black really sounds the most kind of modern and tight of these, and it's almost, I want to say it's like a souped up um, modded rat, or just, it's got a tighter bass, and I don't know which one is closer to the real thing, but I like the black the best so far. Um, it just seems to be very tight, very controlled. Now, if you want something a little more raw and maybe more low gain, it may not be quite as good for that. I'm gonna switch back and forth between the Archetype Gojira Dirt and the uh, black pedal. <laughs> Thank you. 
The Gojira dirt pedal's got more upper mid kind of bark to it and a little less low end. And the black is, in comparison, sounds almost a little bit scooped. It's got a bigger bass too. It's like a tight bass, but it's big. Let's check out the range of distortion on all these. <laughs> So the black has a ton of gain on tap. Past noon, it sort of just oversaturates. It does still add more gain, of course, but you're not gonna notice as big of a difference. I do really like the sound and the texture of the gain on this pedal. So, so far I'm liking that one a lot. All right, so I've, I've realized something about this here rodent pedal, at least I think. Unfortunately, there's no manual available for this, so I I'm just have to speak from what I'm seeing with it. But uh, when it loads up, all of these toggle switches are in the up position, which I usually assume means on. So I turned them all off. But for example, um, when I have them all off, I noticed it had very low gain. Now this roots mod, um, I looked that up, what that is, and it's when you, uh, you clip one of the resistors and essentially it gets you more bass and less gain. So it's definitely lower gain when it's in the down position. So I believe that I've been using this wrong. And so to be fair, it is more similar to the black. Um, however, I'll notice the EQ is different. So if I again play with uh, all the mods off and I'm gonna uh, go back and forth between the black and the rodent, the rodent has much more mids, which puts it more in line with the other rat pedals making the black the sort of odd one out here. Uh, starting on the black. So the black still has more gain, and to me it sounds more compressed and sort of scooped, which I don't think is a bad thing here, but that's what it sounds like to me. Once again, let's go through the gain on this rodent. So like the black, it gets pretty high gain and you start to sort of drop off after about the 60 or 70% of the gain. This one is maybe a little, still a little lower gain than the black. The R47, let's investigate this.
far, I might like that one the best when the gain is maxed out. It's got a nice, uh, slight fuzzy quality to it. All right, next up is the dirt in the Archetype Gojura from Neural DSP. Let's just go through them all back to back. Once again, the black stands out as having more of a scooped tone to me a little bit darker uh, probably wouldn't cut through a mix as well as the others uh, it's got the most gain on tap and solo in a sense I like it the best but it's kind of a toss-up I'm playing on the neck pickup here with my single coil activated on this guitar my coil split and I really like that sound um, the neck pickup with the coil split sounds quite nice with this pedal <laughs> actually like that better than the humbucker and the bridge pickup <laughs> so this pedal is a little bit I mean it's a little bit different than the kind of distortion that I'm used to and it's it's not quite a fuzz and it's not quite your typical distortion I don't really use distortion pedals okay I pretty much just use you know high gain amps and I might throw a tube screamer as a sort of boost and EQ and, and turn off the drive entirely so I don't really use a lot of distortion pedals and I always feel like I don't quite know what to say because it's not what I do. But I really like this uh, neck pickup single coil with this pedal. I think it's cool. I like the sound. So what have I learned? Well, first of all, I've learned that all of these plugins are good. I think they all sound good. They all do something a little bit different, but also mostly the same. And they all do that rat kind of thing. I think they work really well in the lower gain range, maybe edge of breakup territory or, you know, just uh, classic crunch, Captain Crunch. That's right. Yeah, I really like them for that. I prefer this on the neck pickup with my single coil. That, I think, sounds better with this pedal. That looser, janglier, lower gain sound. 
with this pedal and uh, this combination I've got right now, it sounds good. Um, is it a good metal pedal? Uh, yes, maybe. It depends on what you're doing. If you're doing something a little looser, a little sludgier, maybe something kind of thrashy, you want something a little more raunchy and um, a, a little a little flabbier. I think it, it sounds good for like your your E standard kind of stuff on downtune guitars for more modern stuff or for you know gent. Uh, no, no, I would I would not do it. Um, I don't think this is what you're gonna want for that. Uh, you want like a precision drive, and there's already a free Doctor Drive from Audiority. So if you want a gent, you know that's a much better overdrive pedal for this. This is a good standalone distortion to provide the main gain for your amp. And it's got a character, and you kind of like it or not. And these all have a slightly different EQ character um, that you could balance out with the amp. They all would, would probably be comparable if you mess with them enough. But uh, you might, you know, pick the one you like the sound of the best. I've learned to appreciate this pedal. But I think that it doesn't usually suit the kind of stuff that I typically do, which might be okay. I think it's great for, like, a grunge or kind of more uh, indie rock math rock kind of stuff like that where you want maybe you're playing more chords and stuff um and you're doing something with a little lower game gain than uh modern metal that would be that would be appropriate probably a good blues pedal even you know it's a little funny maybe but i don't know how many blues dads are rocking a rat but you know 1979 it's classic so you know show up to your uh your blues night with one of these bad boys. Show the dads who's boss. Um, yeah, so I like it. Uh, I like it, and I think it's a cool pedal. And uh, yeah, you should totally, you know, check out these free plugins because why not? If you don't like them, you don't have to. Will I go buy a rat? Maybe. I mean, at some point, probably. Like, I kind of want one just so that I can have one, but. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly right for me personally, but um, but I kind of like it, you know. So this has been Attack of the Rat Clones and my very spooky Halloween special. I hope you enjoyed it and perhaps learned something. And I will see you in the next video. Like and subscribe. Uh, cheers. I'm so scared.